Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, My Kinda Art, and for today's video, not that long ago I made a small, small acrylic painting of a baile folklorico dancer, which means a Mexican folkloric dance, and this one I did it in acrylic, it's a very tiny one on a canvas board right here, and for this video it's a tutorial on the process that I do to create a painting, everything from prepping the canvas, the paint, and the brushes that you need. So yeah, go ahead and check it out. But before we get started, if you're new to my channel, consider hitting the like button, ringing the bell, and leaving a comment. Let's get to it. So if you haven't already been on my channel, I have an entire gallery an entire section dedicated to my Mexican heritage, my Mexican culture, all related to things like folkloric dancing, all the food that we eat, and different things like that. So go ahead and check that out. And this is just another addition to all of that. And this is a woman in a folkloric dress doing a traditional dance. And this is using the Mexican flag colors of red, white, and green. And I chose to do this on a tiny canvas board. And one of the things that you'll need, or that I like to do, when it's something that it's this tiny, it doesn't take a long time, is prepping it using white gesso. Now a lot of you might be wondering what is gesso used for, but a lot of canvases that you already buy already come pre-prepped and pre-primed. Gesso is very similar to white acrylic paint, but it's a little bit thinner. It dries hard and it makes the surface a little bit more stiff. And what it does, it also makes the canvas surface a little bit more smoother, if that's what you're looking for. It primes the surface for painting. And without the gesso, paint sometimes would soak into the weaves of the canvas, making you use a bit more paint than normal. But if you are looking for something to have texture, you don't really need to prime it. But since I had it, I this does make it very bright, very white and a very clean and what I like to do is do two coats and it dries very quickly so it doesn't take a lot of time at all. And again a lot of canvases are pre-primed so you don't need this unless you have it and because I had it since my college days I just decided to use it and it makes the painting laying a lot easier because what gesso does it gives the canvas some tooth, it dries to a matte finish and it makes the paint absorb onto it and grabs it a lot easier. And after a light drawing that I did with my HB pencil, I did a quick outline of it. This was really easy to do. I wanted this dancer to have a flowing dress and it looks like there's movement. I decided to use an, a slight impressionist style, which means it's gonna be a bit blurry and intentionally pushing my paintbrush onto the canvas in small dabs to give it this impression of a slight blurry and textured look. So after that step, I decided to go with the red first because that is the most amount of color that this painting has. So I did a quick base layer of red. So I started doing the head and the hands. And then the next color is the green, which is the second most used color for the little details on the dress. Kind of wraps around the entire part of the dress and some of the neckline as well. And third would be the white which also is part of the trim of the in between the red and green. And I use titanium white for this. And you'll notice that because this is a small painting that I am using some small paintbrushes and in the variety of a rounded one, a pointed triangle version and a detailed brush. And this makes it easy to get into all of those little details that I like to do. And because this dress has a lot of angles, a lot of curves, a lot of rounded edges and lines, I can easily move in and out as I please. And most importantly, what I almost forgot to mention is that I like to thin the paint down with water. And here I have a tiny spray bottle that you can find at any department store, like Walmart or Target. If you look at the right where the green and blue paint is at, I like to spray directly on top of it. And this adds not only some moisture and it thins it out but it also keeps the paint from drying and as you all know if you've never used acrylic paint before it dries into plastic into acrylic plastic 
really quickly. So I like to moisten the paint that I have exposed to the air. And because it is a fine mist, it won't over dilute it as well. But by adding water, this makes it thin, especially for the beginning layer to add in the base colors. As for the materials and the paint, the one that I have always used is Liquitex acrylic paint. And this one I've used for years and years. And this is one of the better quality paints that I feel like a lot of people use. It has great color, it's very rich, and the price point is very decent. And you don't wanna go anything below this, especially when you're trying to get some rich colors. And you'll notice when it's cheap acrylic paint, when it's very diluted and watered down, and it's not thick, and viscous. So now that I laid the foundation of these solid colors of red, white, and green, I like to work with the shadows. And what I did was mix a little bit of purple, a little bit of black, and just a tiny bit of red. And this is gonna be used all over where there's any type of shadows. And it's gonna give those ruffles a lot of depth. And as you notice, since the reference photo that I chose, the light is coming from the top, everything at the bottom and below, for example, where you can see the arms underneath the dress, that's where the shadows lay. So this is gonna add a nice definition and a nice contrast between light and dark. And the same goes for the gray tones in the white section of the dress as well. And as you can see, we're going from the solid colors going into the dark shadows and eventually into the light highlights. So as you can see I added a bit of black to give some of those shadows to the white sections right underneath the dress as well and I also painted her boots too. So in the ruffles of the dress right underneath I'm adding a bit of that to give that shadow look and leaving the top part of the ruffles just pure white, just for now. And right where you see, I'm adding a bit more black right underneath. Because that's where the light doesn't enter. And that is called a cast shadow, the darkest of the shadows, where none of the light will penetrate. And because I had my black thin, thin brush ready, I decided to start adding the eyebrows, the nose, and the lips and started adding some shadow underneath the chin, a little bit of the cheeks, and just everywhere on the face to give it some depth as well. So a lot of browns were used, a lot of white, a little bit of orange and yellow. And as you can already tell, having mid-tones against a darker color will bring each other's colors up or down. For example, the shadows will push things back and lighter colors will push things forward, giving it some three dimension. And I even already added the black hair as well. And next I moved on to the green paint, added a little bit of blue and yellow and a little bit of white. And this is going to be the highlights and anything that's a bit more of where the light would be hitting. And this will also make the, gr the green stand out a little bit more when I start adding the dark areas to that as well. And as you're noticing, I'm cleaning in between my color changes and choices into some water and wiping it with a towel and this makes any kind of colors from running and now to add the dark green and the shadows I added a little bit of purple to the green and this is a nice nice balance and it also is a complementary color to green so I did like using the violet on the red and green because everything's gonna kind of blend in together Everything will complement one another when everything, as I'm finishing this. And now for the highlights in the red, which I saved for last, using a thin brush is adding white and the crimson red. And that's for the highlights in, in the ruffles and all the wrinkles of the dress. And I even use it on the flower headdress that she has. And now I really like how this texture comes together as I'm zooming in on the canvas. It leaves it a little bit rough, just a tiny bit. And I didn't blend this because this is a slight impressionist style. So it is a tiny bit blurry on purpose. I didn't want it to be perfectly blended. 
And this is a style that I've been using for a lot of my folkloric dancers because it gives it a bit more of a movement and a bit more of a style suited for something like this when I want it to show visible brush strokes and some texture. It makes things feel a bit more alive. It has a bit more of a personality as sometimes a perfectly blended painting might feel a little bit lifeless and boring. But yeah, what did you guys think of this walkthrough tutorial? Thank you guys so much for watching and see you later. Bye.